The Wadabi have kept their ancient way of life for thousands of years remote from urban forces. They live in the Sahal region of West Africa. The Sahal stretches between Senegal in the west and Chad in the east. At its heart is Niger, a vast land of 500,000 square miles, only half of which is habitable. There is only one short and erratic rainy season, and for most of the year, the Sahal is like a blazing furnace. In this harsh environment, the Wadabi eke out a living as cattle herders, constantly on the move, looking for new pasture. Life in the desert is dirty and hard, but they believe they are the most beautiful people on earth. No self-respecting Wadabi herdsman would be without his compact mirror. Wearing makeup is part of their ethnic identity. It's also worn to attract women, especially at the Garawal, the annual beauty contest which marks the end of the rainy season. The isolated location and date are kept secret until just before the event. It's the highlight of the year, lasts for seven days and nights, and is an opportunity for men and women from different groups to get together. There are approximately 65,000 Wadabi in Niger. They travel in small family groups, moving every few days, looking for fresh pasture for their zebu cattle. They're fiercely proud of their nomadic way of life and the special bond they have with their animals. This Wadabi family has been travelling since dawn. They're heading towards Ingul, where, at this time of year, they're sought for their cattle. It's 46 degrees centigrade, 115 degrees Fahrenheit. The group are getting tired and they decide to set up camp. Quincy Riga and his friend Mina Gondi are drinking tea with a cousin who's arrived from a neighboring group. He tells them that the location of the Garawal has been announced. Quinch is looking forward to it. I got a malari gear and daft to daft to the age. I me to me a gear on me. Their wives are also looking forward to the year's main event. It was you down in one and the ingle and at here. Yaro Boshi by a better Abungadon. They say a jaw as a ton locachin. In Indiana, they are a cool view. 
Mina's wife, Mariama, is getting excited too. For the moment, however, Quincy and his wife Yaya have another important event on their minds. Quincy is taking a second bride. With no walls between them in the desert, the three will share their lives together. Wadabi women have relative freedom and mobility within marriage. Unhappily married women can elope with a new husband. Wadabi means the people of the taboo. Because to remain Wadabi, they must adhere to strict codes relating to behavior and appearance. Women divide their hair into segments and sport a big top knot at the front, which they remove when they're older. Men braid their hair into intricate shapes and often wear eyeliner even into old age. Girls are cut with razors when they're babies and charcoal is sprinkled in the wound to form tattoos. Face packs of minerals are worn to improve the complexion. Even the way they set up their camp adheres to strict rules. Women lay out their beds north to south according to rank and erect a table on which they display their possessions. Everything has its place and every two or three days it's loaded onto the back of a donkey or an ox and they move on. Wadabi are among the last nomads in Africa. Severe droughts have dramatically reduced their herds. Climate change and the spread of agriculture are forcing growing numbers of Wadabi into towns like this one to look for food and their ancient way of life is under threat. Janari Husseini, the head of the group, is concerned about their future. <laughs> After the recent droughts, there were stories of men who'd lost all their cattle and unable to accept it, had carried on herding as if their animals were still alive. They dislike killing or selling their cattle and generally only use them for milking. Quincy has 15 animals and tomorrow Yaya will have to share them with her husband's new bride. Rain is on its way. The air contains particles of red sand from the Sahara and casts an orange hue.
Gaia fell in love with Quincy two years ago at the Garawal. And they chose to stay together. This type of union is called Tigal, a marriage made from love. The new marriage is different. It was arranged by Quinch's parents when he was very small. Would Darby call a marriage arranged by the parents Cobgul? Then a worry, a modon, 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 a The camp's looking forward to celebrating Quinch's new marriage. Mama. Yaya waits for the arrival of the new bride while food is being prepared. The wedding guests are here at last. The visitors are welcomed by the group, but in Wadabi culture, they must observe humility and avoid looking directly at each other. Contact with other people in the desert is a rare event. Later, the bride, Fatima, arrives with her family. She was betrothed to Quincy by her parents when she was seven. Now she's 15, and he's decided to claim her. Quincy can see the benefits of having two wives. Janari, the head of the group, welcomes the visitors and invites them to eat. Men and women eat separately. Wadabi are far away from modern communications and news is spread by word of mouth. While the elders wait for their food, the groom is eating with his friends. Tonight, the men have gathered to agree on the terms of the marriage. 
it is customary for the groom to give three of his cattle to the bride's family. The women will not be included tonight, but it is they who will choose the cattle in the morning. Mm. It's time for the women to choose their animals. They know a beautiful man when they see one, and they can also spot a beautiful cow. <laughs> Fatima, the new bride, will not sleep with Quincy for a few months until after the third and final cow is handed over to her parents. <laughs> Finally, the women are satisfied. Fatima will go back to her parents' camp tonight, and Yaya will have Quincy to herself for the next two months. The following day, the weather changes dramatically. Suddenly the sky darkens, the cattle seem disturbed. Sandstorms can approach in minutes. The calves are tethered before the storm hits. The Wadabi have a special way of coping with physical hardship and emotional upheaval. They call it manyal, a sort of patient acceptance. Munyal is part of an ancient and complex behavioral code which has endured the spread of Christianity and Islam. Their tradition is crucial to them. It's their identity. It means freedom and security. Part of this is pulaku. It is similar in meaning to our word chivalry. The Wadabi must demonstrate patience, self-control, mental discipline, prudence, modesty and respect for others. They must also show semtende. <laughs> tagu isu tagu jaati do fu ci isu do walde dañu mu walde baba mu walde inna mu kambe kamati ne do semta wada na kula wadna be daraja semta be hula be wadna be daraja to yibe fu wadna be gal waayi fu gal be baawata wada na be wada iye gal waayi fu wada na be wada kulo e mabbe there are many taboos in wadabi culture 
but perhaps the strangest of them all is the one which forbids parents from ever speaking to their firstborn child. Quinch's aunt, Zenabu, never spoke to her son until he was an adult. One of the effects of this custom is that children are integrated very quickly into the wider family and lavished with affection. Today, Janari will oversee an important family event. His nephew, Gorsi, is 15 years old. He's about to become a panyo, a young man. His father has given him his first cow, and tonight the group will celebrate. <laughs> Gorse's relations from neighboring camps have made the long journey to the party. <laughs> One of the visitors is Gorse's father. <laughs> to celebrate Gorse's coming of age, Quincy has arranged for the men to perform a dance. But first, they'll let him in on some beauty secrets. <laughs> As Gorsi enters manhood, he's learning how to transform himself for future beauty contests. Although physical beauty is very important to the Wadabi, they also value inner beauty or togu. Quinchy takes Gorsi through his paces in the Yashi a dance intended to seduce women. The men are very relaxed, saving their energies for the Gerawal festival where they will attempt to dance for up to seven days and where women will choose the best performers, taking them into the bush for a night of romance.
Corsi watches the dancers and joins in with the hypnotic swaying. Tired after his dancing lesson, Gorsi returns to the camp and is excused the evening's herding duties. Staring into his compact mirror, he's clearly happy with his new reflection and delays removing his makeup for as long as possible. That evening, the women get together to celebrate Gorsi's coming of age. <laughs> Meanwhile, around the men's campfire, Janari gives Gorsi some advice. <laughs> Now a man, Gorsi reflects on a busy day and looks forward to the time when he can dance for the girls at the Garawal. on the move again. Quincy and his friend Mina are eager to get going as the Garawal starts in two days' time. But unfortunately, they've had a setback. Mina's wife, Mariama, has fallen ill. Mm. <laughs> Although Mariama isn't well, the group must move today. The Wadabi never let their cattle overgraze pasture land and have to booze about the days on which they can travel. group would rather camp on sand than grass, as it offers greater protection against scorpions and snakes. While the beds are being set up, people rally round to help Mariama. Mina is an expert on herbal remedies. They also use herbal treatments for their cattle and burn special markings over affected areas. 
They believe in supernatural forces such as genies, shape-shifting spirits that take the form of humans or animals. Be Allah hoti goto goto ya ati be, e bilchi eja ati do, e wod inji adi wo be Allah holla dum enfi kara dum den kadima dum gonda dum wara non non bi. Ji aku wara taja hango ji aku wara tafak bi hango ji aku wara uta gat tita. Ji afi kara dum wat eira dum fi kara kaza dum wat eini ini kadima bo to tabuori taji eira dum dum wat ini non non bi. The tribe are well known for their magical powers and potions. They wear talismans, mixtures of plants and minerals sewn into small leather packets and attached around the body. Junari's brother, Kabu, explains. Nasuneda, sune sukaba na tarunji chini. Kama na mwe mwe agumuta ne haka, magani daza su daza su na tarunji chini. Amamba mugu magani yai mamu tumpa a. Na tarunji ne kwa dadu chini. Quinchy has a headband containing powerful herbs with amazing properties. One, the sanda, the takobi, magani. See the chiwan kai. Look, ko mutum yana isto wa imini yeta. Bye, ko mi abusa ya ko mat. Oje. Hakana muche tunda gado mune. Imba mui hakana sai kagani. In Gini Mubezo Tare, Saikagani, Abu Baye, the common Armeshi, Babu, in the Sinai, Allah Dawad Damkai, Madafari Muna Jew, Jinshi Hakana, what a beam, Muna Kamaji Mumuja. Gadon Ah, Basiko Damachea Gani Namiji and a swish. Go as I at a triadish. The Wadabi's ancient and secret knowledge of herbal remedies and magic is well known amongst other tribes. This Tuareg tribesman has come to see Mina for advice. Sunna Sangor Chite Fun Dashi Dashi Yo Agora Kai Gantu Amas Ah Kai Sasu Idu Chidu Bara Wan Kai Kundu Yo Yo Insha Allah Aska Yizgar Gor Tashi Yo Nakui Nakai Behudi O Behudi Wurje Wan Wan Ah Wurje Shilan Arahwana Kuta Budi Allah Wan Tidi Aska Sasu Arahudi Aska Iga Ida Rana Sani Hozam Tashi Nda Ba Kai Kai Sila Iga Pas the tribesman tells Mina and Quinchy of a nearby Tuareg camel race. Selling remedies can supplement the income the Wadabi received from milk. This could be a good opportunity to get a little money for the Garawal festival, and the friends decide to go. While they head off towards the camel race, back at the camp, the women are getting excited as Garawal draws near. Yaya is looking forward to seeing family and friends, and Mariama is feeling a lot better. Mina's herbal remedies are working. It's time to get the men's costumes ready. The women and children work hard to ensure they look their best. Quinchy and Mina arrive at the Tuareg camel race. <laughs> 
Tuareg nomads inhabit a vast area covering the middle of the Sahara and northern Sahel. They live in harmony with the Wadabi. is the most expensive beast in the desert and every Wadabi aspires to own one. Although they haven't done any business, Quincy and Mina have had a great day at the races. But on their way back to the camp, they make a big decision regarding the Garawal which won't go down well with their wives. Next morning, back at the camp, Quincy and Mina are packing to go to the Garawal. They've told their wives that they can't go with them. Yeah, <laughs> Janari met the mother of his seven children at the Garawal. What <laughs> <laughs> This year, Janari isn't going to the Garawal. He's staying at home with his family. But Quincy is finding it difficult to get away. After some heated discussions, Mariama and Yaya decide to obey their husbands.
Leaving their wives behind, Quincy and Mina have made the long trek to the road where they hope to get a ride. They're in good spirits, but the morning's arguments have slowed them down, and if they don't get a lift soon, they'll miss the beginning of the festival. Over a thousand Wadabi have made their way to Chintabaradan for this year's Garawal. They've come from all over the Sahal, travelling for days to this isolated spot in the desert. Quincy and Mina have finally arrived at the event they've been waiting all year for. They meet relatives and old friends and exchange news. All over the camp, people are getting ready for the first dance. Then Quincy has a surprise. His new wife, Fatima, is at the festival with a friend. Because it is a Kobgul marriage, she won't start living with Quincy until the final ceremony in two months' time. Until then, Fatima is free to do as she chooses. <laughs> Single girls get the chance to choose lovers at the Garawal, but it's also an opportunity for unhappily married women to find a new husband. Quincy and Mina decide to get ready. Insides of old flashlight batteries make a useful but possibly harmful lipstick. The final touch is an ostrich feather placed on the turban. And this contestant has a talisman to ward off evil words. Quincy and Mina's group get together for a warm-up.
Finally, they're ready to perform their first dance. They make their way to the center of the action. The dancers believe that the chanting brings out their inner beauty, which helps to make them irresistible to women. check out the contestants. Quincy and his friends work hard to project their charms. His ability to roll his right eye in and out is a rare and highly rated talent. Mina uses this lip trembling technique. Women show their preferences with almost imperceptible glances and movements of the arm. The apparent lack of enthusiasm is a demonstration of modesty, or semtende. Some couples will agree with subtle body movements to meet later that evening. And the men who are not chosen will carry on dancing through the night. The garawal lasts for seven days and nights, it's an endurance test that pushes the men to their limits. Mui ado na mui ado. Sana muje una fara jiri unmache yazo changa ba mui ana diva ima dea gani machao chicken. Dada gani machi iya hita jiri saya okay. Sana ni mukega. Quincy is tired. Mina dropped out a long time ago. Nabara Mayahi, Chimayahi Nashi, one of Mashima the Nashi, my end zone Mayahi. Jero Linda Zuka, the Yanai, Munaji that is, Dukas, the Ganabara Harden, Nashikin that is. Allah, I am the Zuna, the Chona Mamuna, Alga Muna Samis, Kuma Sama, I shall like. In a gunny chance, don't the two shake any Yanazonika in any consigo, Harden Sahel. After a week of almost continuous dancing, the Garawal is drawing to a close. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the camp, Yaya and Mariama are making their own entertainment. Quincy and